Hey, what's up guys? This is Bryce Van Hoosen. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to compare and contrast the various Floyd Rose slash double locking tremolo system guitars that I have with me. I've collected quite a few of these over the years and also collected quite a bit of knowledge that goes along with it. So I just wanted to share some of the things that I know and uh, maybe kind of dispel some of the, the differences and all of that kind of stuff between the various different offerings that are out there on the market. Keep in mind, all of my tremolos or, or bridges, whatever you want to call them, are uh, pretty heavily modded and are not necessarily in the state in which I bought them, but I'll cover that in a little bit more depth once we kind of get into it here. If there are any specific mods that you want to know more about, feel free to leave it in the comments and uh, I'll try to do a dedicated video on them. And if I am wrong about any of this stuff, feel free to correct me and let me know in the comments below as well. I think that's probably one of the coolest parts about being in an online guitar community like this is we can all sort of share our knowledge and I can learn and you can learn and we can all learn. Everybody's just full of knowledge now right? Well, hopefully anyways. And lastly, if you are into this kind of stuff, Floyd Rose guitar content, guitar content in general, heavy metal guitar content, feel free to give me a subscribe, leave a like, a comment, all that kind of stuff. It uh, obviously helps out in the algorithm, so that is much appreciated. All right, so first up, let's check out what I got going on here with this original Floyd Rose. All right, so first up here, we have my favorite in the Floyd Rose series. These are the original Floyd Rose. Now, there are a couple of different specs of original Floyd Rose that are out there. I'm gonna talk about this one and uh, some of the other ones that uh, came as 1984. But basically, as I said, I have heavily modded my Floyd Rose bridges. Back in the day, I basically only had this guitar, so if I wanted to try something out, I was basically just modding. That is, uh, that is how I experimented. But this essentially started off as what is called a hot rod original Floyd Rose. So that means that it essentially came with stainless steel hardware. If you can see that, if that'll focus. Uh, so stainless steel hardware, stainless steel saddle screws, and uh, base plate screws, etc., etc. I ultimately changed mine out to the normal original spec Floyd Rose, which are these black ones here, just because I thought might have been uh, sort of getting to be too much silver and chrome on this guitar with uh, the the pickups that I changed out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I kind of wanted to keep uh, some of the some of the ratio of silver to black down here. Some other changes that I have made are I put these 1984 brass fine tuners on this thing. Basically these, they're not original, I added them. And what I had to do to get the other ones out, there's usually a little, whoa, here we go. There's usually a little crimp at the end of this that uh, basically makes it so they stay in so that you can't turn these out all the way from the base plate of the bridge. But uh, I actually took just a little handsaw and sawed the tops of these off and then drilled them out through the bottom so that I could get these brass ones on because I'm absolutely freaking insane. There's absolutely no benefits other than it's just a different aesthetic choice. The other change I have on this, and you'll see I have this on a lot of my guitars, are I have these uh, hollow point intonation system saddle screws. So basically this comes with an additional, let's see if I can angle this and get the light right. But basically there's like a little, uh, a little lip inside of this hollow point that the fine tuner screw rests on so that once you unclamp the saddle in order to intonate, it, it doesn't move. So you can kind of just make adjustments using this thing and it'll sort of stay in place. So it's not a perfect solution, but it, it does work pretty well. Uh, the only downside is it kind of limits the total range you have of the fine tuner. There's a lot less room for tuning adjustments with these things on, unfortunately. So uh, the bar, 
has been changed on this guy. I have a, a push in bar just because, man, it, it's so easy just to pull this thing out of the case. Push the bar in, it doesn't move. It stays kind of locked in place there. And uh, yeah, super easy to go. Uh, the original bar that it came with is this guy here, the collared one. I'm sure everyone's seen this. I looked all over to try to find the little thread bushing thing that it actually connects to in the body and, and couldn't, so it's probably lost to time and space at this point. Original Floyd, the hot rod version, basically it's the same as the totally stock original Floyd spec, just with the addition of these stainless steel hardware here. The base plates and all of this stuff here is made out of hardened steel, so that's great. Uh, the, uh, the posts, I think I've had to replace these only because I used to do a really stupid trick of lifting my guitar up by the whammy bar, uh, and it ended up bending them forward, so I had to have a, a tech go in there and re-drill these out and put new ones in. Uh, but other than that, this thing, totally original, have not had to replace anything other than the odd, uh, you know, aesthetic choices with the hardware. Um, but yeah, this thing is over 10 years old at this point and still going strong, never had any tuning issues. So that is why the original Floyd Rose is my absolute favorite. All right, and moving on, we have a out of the box 1984 spec Floyd Rose here. Now this replaced the Floyd Rose 1000 series that came stock on this Jackson Pro Series guitar, uh, which is why one of the differences with the 84 Floyd Rose is the bridge posts are actually these, these little wood screws here. So I did in fact use the bridge posts that came with the 1000 series and the original lines up perfectly with them, so never had any issues with this. Uh, I did add the addition of the hollow point intonation thingies here because, again, it, it kind of makes setup a little bit easier for this style of bridge. Um, but these the fine tuners, the brass ones, completely stock. All the hardware on this is completely stock. The bar is also completely stock. The other difference about the 84 and Guys, I have, I have a broken string here. I was rocking too hard the other day, and uh, <laughs> I've just been too lazy to change this thing. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but the other cool thing about the 84 is it has this twist-in style arm here. And so the way that that works, and I, I really like these. I'm kind of torn if I like the push-in style or I like the twist-in style more. Um, Man, I never do this from this angle, so bear with me here. Uh, it requires some tools in order to get it tight. I like a tight bar that doesn't move around. In terms of actual tightness and how little the bar moves in the socket itself, this one by far is king. It just takes a little bit more to actually get it in. So again, you have to use this guy if you don't want it to kind of come undone in the middle of a show or something like that. So we thread it in here. And then just to get it extra super tight. And then that thing, yeah, it's basically, it's not moving. And so I liked these things so much that I bought a few of them to add to some of my other Floyd Rose guitars. These will fit on pretty much any other Floyd out there. Uh, whether it's original, 1000 series, 1500 series, Schaller, etc., etc. But basically the idea is you clamp this thing in and uh, it sits in between these two plastic washers. And you basically get this thing as tight as you possibly want it uh, with the bridge out of the body. And then ideally you're not going to have to adjust it again. My mileage on that has been uh, sometimes a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes I gotta pull them out to re-tighten them if you really go ham on the bar. Because these little plastic washer things here have a tendency to move a little bit. And, you know, plastic isn't the hardest of substances. So 
it can kind of flex a little bit and get loose over time. So yeah, that's kind of why I'm sticking with the push-in bar for now. But definitely, I think, you know, if you want the most response and the least amount of movement or give in between the collar and the actual bar, you want it to feel like one piece, this old style twist in one is the way to go. All right, this is another original Floyd Rose in the 84 spec. Uh, this one, again, I put the hollow point intonation system on this. Uh, these are my road guitars, so you're not really guaranteed in how much time you're gonna get before a show. So if you need to make any intonation adjustments or anything like that, it's, it's nice to make it as easy as possible. So that's why I enjoy using those. Um, but on this one, again, another another push in bar here so this one's a little bit tighter than it is on the on the king v i love that uh, floyd rose makes all of this stuff kind of modular and everything's sort of interchangeable makes it a little bit confusing because you have so many different specs but you know you can really take any kind of thing uh, you can take it, your original out of the box and mod it to 84 spec if you wanted to uh, like I have sort of so I have all these kind of strange hybrid spec Floyd roses but this one did indeed start as an 84 coming out of the box uh, again this similar to the Floyd Rose uh, original has hardened steel everything and uh, I have never had any sort of issue with these and i will say i did also leave the 1000 series posts in here that's never caused me any kind of issues so if you're ever wondering if you need to replace the posts if you want to upgrade your 1000 series tremolo to a original of some sort uh no you do not have to do that all right so the other difference about the 84 spec oh, man this bar's in the way get out of here uh, about the 84 spec Floyd Rose is that it comes with a big brass block but as you can see here I have changed mine out for a stone tone granite block so big thanks to Rob over at stone tone uh, you can get these from the Floyd Rose Floyd Rose site and um, yeah I I really dig the way that these sound I tried them over at uh, Jeff Loomis's house back in like 2019 and I've been hooked ever since so um, and then some uh, noise of springs in here as well this one here is a Floyd Rose 1000 series that again I've done some significant modifications to as to what has come stock on the guitar itself uh, the posts are original that came I, I usually don't mess with those if I can help it because sometimes they don't make these things to uh, they, they don't make them super interchangeable so any kind of woodworking is beyond my capabilities I'm uh, just a, a lowly player here first things first I put the <clears throat> 84 brass fine tuners on this thing as well as another push in bar here so there we go one really important change that I made to this is I actually bought a original made in Germany Floyd Rose base plate just the base plate for this and then used all of the hardware from the 1000 series tremolo and it fit and it works and it stays in tune and there's no issue nothing like that I think last I checked you can get a base plate uh, which is made out of hardened steel I don't exactly know what they make the rest of the 1000 series out of so these are the korean made ones and according to the floyd rose site they say that they are made from all of the same materials to the same specifications um they're just made in korea and they're sold directly to guitar manufacturers so you can't buy one of these off the shelf you can't buy a 1000 series off the shelf if you wanted to you can buy parts for a 1000 series but not the entire built 1000 series uh, unless you want to get it in burnt chrome oddly enough that's the only one that you can buy but floyd rose says that they're basically made out of the same material uh, all the same spec all the same size etc etc I don't 100% know if, if that's true what I want to do when I get another one of these when I get a fully stock 1000 series is uh, basically to take it apart and to take a 
Floyd Rose original apart and then just kind of weigh and see if all of the individual components are the same, the same weight or so. Um, because I have a suspicion that maybe the 1000 ones are not entirely made out of um, hardened steel. It might be kind of like a, some sort of composite metal. Not sure. No idea. That's just conjecture. Me making assumptions may or may not be true. Needs to be tested. But I do know that if you want to swap out the base plate, uh, if you want to get a full made in Germany, full ass hardened steel base plate for your 1000 series tremolo, last I checked, it was like a hundred bucks on say like reverb or from the float rose side or something like that. Uh, you totally can do that and it'll work. No issues. All right. I'm really gonna have to balance this and in place here to show this part but what that does not include is the nuts so the nuts if you buy a guitar that comes stock with the floyd rose 1000 series i would just leave the nut on there i found that the nuts between the original floyd rose the made in germany one and the 1000 series the made in korea one they're slightly different when i swapped this guy out for a made in germany r3 nut the action on the fretboard was sky high so for whatever reason this one is slightly shorter than the original floyd rose for whatever reason i have no idea but it was borderline unplayable with the original floyd rose nut on there so uh, at least for the old ones the pre 2023 you could always tell the difference between an original and a 1000 by this r3 made in germany marking i guess they've since changed it so they look a little bit different now but the 1000 series kind of look sort of like this if you can see that they just have some nondescript markings on the on the back of them unless you're gonna take it to a luthier to have it shimmed down or um, shimmed up or whatever i would just go ahead and leave the 1000 series i doubt you're going to notice any difference in tone really um, let's be honest and uh playability is going to be what it was intended from the factory all right so up next is the floyd rose 1500 so this is basically the 1000's answer to the hot rotted original floyd so this is absolutely bone stock this guitar i've kept uh i've kept entirely stock for <laughs> whatever reason but as you can see it comes with the stainless steel saddle screws stainless steel intonation screws here uh, or your saddle block screws i think are what those are called and then the normal black fine tuners oddly enough the 1000 series comes with the basic uh twist in collared arm kind of like this guy i've lost all these for some weird reason don't ask me why but the 15 comes with a push-in one. So this guitar is actually what kind of got me hooked on the whole push-in arm thing, just because, man, it, I swear, it's just something, something really easy about pulling this thing out and putting it in without having to like, you know, tighten anything or whatever. It doesn't come loose and, you know, stays at the general kind of uh, tautness that you set it at with this little set screw down here. It's a little Allen wrench thing. It's maybe a little bit, it has a little bit more play. It doesn't feel as solid as the twist in one, but you know, the twist in one, like I said, it kind of comes undone after a while and you need tools to get it to be tight, kind of out of the case before the gig. So yeah, the convenience factor of, uh, of, of this push an arm is uh is pretty cool oh one other thing that i didn't mention is the difference in the arms between the push in old style and the actual collared floyd rose so for some reason the collared one has like a little bit more it like goes up at a slightly <laughs> bigger angle and it's just a little bit longer than the twist in style arm for whatever reason overall it feels like you kind of need to put a little bit more muscle into this guy in making it you know if you want to do a really extended dive bomb or pull up or whatever uh, there's less play with this than there is with this um, the reason why i don't like these is you know 
if you if you move this around too much, uh, this collar thing just kind of comes loose and you end up having to tighten it like 50 times during a show, literally in between every song because it just comes loose. So kind of annoying. So that's a little aside. But uh, yeah, that is the Floyd Rose 1500. Again, made in Korea. Not sure if there's a difference in the materials. Floyd Rose says that there's not, but I don't know. Maybe there is. More testing needs to be done. All right, so we're getting out of the realm of the actual Floyd Rose branded stuff and into some of the more Wild West Floyd Rose licensed tremolos that are out there. Uh, so up until now, pretty much everything is interchangeable, right? All of the Floyd Rose branded stuff from the Floyd Rose special to the original Floyd Rose to the 1000, 1500, whatever. It's all interchangeable. You can use all different parts for them um, with the exception of that nut issue that I was talking about. They're all kind of slightly different sizes. But now once we get into the license stuff, man, it is, it is anybody's guess what is going to be compatible so do your research take your measurements and uh you know stuff uh, might might not work so just kind of keep that in mind uh, but first up we have the schaller licensed floyd rose now these came on a lot of guitars from the 80s a lot of the old charvels use these you'll see them branded as a jackson bridge a lot of the time uh, but this is the the schaller shape so as you can see the actual base plate is much wider than the original floyd rose and it also uses these shorter barrel block screws here these the, the screws that kind of block to keep your string in the actual saddle here saddle locking screws i think they're called are shorter for some reason and they don't have the little end things on them like the originals do so they don't have these little additional nubs here the allen key is the same size so the hardware that you use to tighten and uh, loosen all of these is the same as it is with the original Floyd Rose branded stuff, but you need to get specific string lock screws for Schaller tremolos because they are short, um, unless you want to route out the back of your guitar, which, you know, these are getting old, kind of hard to find in decent condition, so I don't really recommend that. The other thing is that the actual bridge posts here, as you can see, they are they are massive on this um, on this Charvel. These things are I don't know. This is uh, the size of a Allen key that I usually use to adjust the truss rod in my in my Jacksons. Uh, that's what I'm using to raise and lower the action on on this bridge so these things are huge the actual posts which are um, if you look at say a floyd rose bridge post you can see they're kind of thin the bushings they actually go into the wood the part with the kind of jagged edges that is like twice the size on this charvel so they're they're huge they might even be like half an inch or, or something like that absolutely massive bushings in the body of this guitar probably because it's basswood but i have other guitars that are basswood and i have not seen the same thing uh only only on this one so kind of uh kind of strange so modifications on this uh so basically when i got this thing this thing's in 1989 the bridge that came on it was a jackson branded bridge it was shot it didn't stay in tune. It was it was god awful. Uh, so I got the Schaller branded base plate off of Reverb. I think again it was somewhere around a hundred bucks. Uh, but you can still pick these up, uh, fully built, fully assembled, um, all that sort of thing. But I got just the base plate itself and put some original Floyd Rose saddles on this. And that seems to work out just fine. No issues there with uh, sizing or anything like that. Really, you just kind of want to watch these bridge posts and the actual string lock screws. On here, I have, again, a twist in old style arm. So that is interchangeable with the, with the Schaller base, um, as well as I've used some titanium string blocks. I don't know, these things are okay. They're quite a bit harder, so I actually 
kind of prefer the black ones, uh, the, the hardened steel ones, because you can tighten them so much that they kind of create indentations in the string block itself, and it uh, mm. will kind of hold the string in better. These ones, I've had a little bit more slippage with the uh, titanium ones before, so that might just be me. Your mileage may vary. Um, and then, of course, I added these stainless steel saddle intonation screws here on this so that the, those don't come stock they come with the, the black ones all right uh other than that i think the material of this is made out of some kind of zinc alloy material uh, with hardened steel inserts put in here so you can actually see if you get the base plate it is the part that actually connects with the the bridge post itself is a stainless steel color so it's kind of that same silver color these overall a little bit lighter a little bit more prone to damage than the original floyd rose but ever since i changed this out which is i don't know it's been a few years at this point i haven't had any issues with tuning stability or anything like that so no idea why the dimensions are so much different between this, uh, the Schaller branded, and say something like a Schaller Lockmeister, which is you know basically like an original Floyd Rose, or even the original Floyd Rose, which is made by Schaller. I don't, I don't know why they decided to make them as different as they did, but they're quite a bit different, so be aware of that. Okay, last up here, I have an oddball, uh, or another oddball, I should say. Unfortunately, I don't have a Godo Tremolo, which is, I think, the other big, big kind of double locking tremolo system that you're gonna see out there. Hopefully I can get my hands on one of those sometime in 2024. And uh, as soon as I do, I'll make a video kind of comparing it to the others. But alas, this Wilkinson, Wilkinson Pro Series, 3 Series, I don't know what that says. Uh, something like that is is what we're gonna have to make do with here. So yeah, this is a this is a really weird one. Uh, I got this guitar. This is a 1992 Jackson Professional uh, Stealth EX. It came with this branded or Jackson branded licensed from Floyd Rose tremolo. Uh, and as you can see, the, the actual profile of this thing is, is way different from an original Floyd Rose. So we have this, it's uh, kind of kind of spiky or kind of um, angled here, I should say. And this thing needed to be replaced because, you know, I've made a video about this before, but oh my God, look at these. That is, that is tune, tune? <laughs> I just made a new word. Uh, that is chewed up beyond all hell so this thing didn't stay in tune at all um, you can see I cracked a saddle in two which tells me that this stuff was not made out of uh, hardened steel it's probably some kind of alloy composite metal whatever um, so I replaced it with an original Floyd Rose saddle uh, for the high E string and you could see the profile on these kind of a bit different not as squared off a little bit more round the bar is a twist in bar right and it twists into the block here kind of like a, a strat more traditional strat style tremolo system all right there we go oh, it's out but yeah it doesn't have a collar it literally just goes into the block uh, and the wilkinson is basically kind of the same thing the route is the same. It's got this little uh, missing thing here because, you know, makes it easier to line up an aftermarket bridge if you don't have to worry about both of these things kind of cradling the, the, the bridge posts. Basically, I mean, the sizing and the routing of this is kind of uh, the same. I sort of feel like they kind of took the design and just sort of ran with it. And now they're making their sort of a uh, non-licensed weird Wilkinson version. I think that these are made in China now. Uh, don't quote me on that. The bar is, it is a push in one. So that's, that's cool. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Other than that, it looks pretty, pretty similar. Uh, this kind of, uh, the collar on that a little, a little bit weird, a little strange. I don't like this bridge at all. I'll say that, uh, as soon as I can, I'm going to replace this with a Schaller Floyd Rose or not a Schaller Floyd Rose, but a Schaller bridge, uh, like my Charvel has the route is not going to match up, you know, nearly as nice. Uh, this one kind of has the angled sort of routing in it. So it's, it's made for 
a bridge like this, but I think it'll work. It, it'll be okay in the long run. All right, those are all of the bridges that I have for now. Uh, as soon as I get some more, I'll uh, keep the comparisons and contrasts coming. So hope to see you for a uh, part two at some point in the future.